Good morning and welcome back to the Namaste Experience. You're a beautiful Namaste village. It is Monday and I'm just so excited to be with all of you. Hope you all had a beautiful weekend. But now it's time to dive back into the deep end of the pool. Sometimes the weekend is like um, sitting in, in a lounge chair on a nice sunny day next to the pool. But then we have to get back to business and not, not in the, the shallow end. We do not live on the shallow end of this pool. We we dive to the deepest part. And it's in that the depths of that ocean that we find great treasure. It's like a child may sit at the shore and find lovely little shells or rocks, but the experienced diver is able to go to the deepest part of the ocean and find treasures beyond the imagination of the child. Does that make sense? That's what we're doing. We're diving to the deepest part of this infinite ocean of grace, and we are finding treasures within us, because that's the ocean within us. You know, the, 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 the uh, affirmation that we begin with every day begins with, my soul has but one goal, to awaken to the truth that is forever true. In fact, I think you could take anything that we share here at Namaste Village and bring it into that one line. We're here to awaken to the truth that is forever true. And yet, and this is why we come together every day, is to make the steps in between. Because you can't start at the bottom of a, of a staircase and just jump to the top. The, 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 the pinnacle of the experience that we are here to claim within perception is only love is real. We say that almost every day, no exceptions, only love is real. But once again, there are steps in between to get to that experience. The primary step is what we're going to be talking about today. What is the primary step to have a direct experience of that love? And ultimately, it comes down to this one line. We're, we're going to read a, a few lines from A Course in Miracles today. But it comes down to this, projection makes perception. What you project is what you experience, okay? But let's back up a little bit. See, the ego, the, which is just that part of our mind that is determined to remain separate, determined to be in control, determined to run the show. The ego believes that there is always an exception to that truth, that there's always an exception. But in reality, we now know that the truth is forever true. There's no exception to something that is forever true, right? There's, there's no exception to that. So what the ego believes is immediately overcome by the truth, that love has no exception. Truth has no exception. Do you, do you remember back when a certain number of people used to talk about alternative truths? Well, this is an alternative truth. Well, there's no alternative truth. That which is true is forever true, or it's not true. And this is this is the first ex, the, like the, the first gateway into the experience of who I really am, who I am, the reality that is forever real, the truth that is forever true. And so as, as soon as we get this, we begin to realize that this whole idea of the world that I seem to see is really just that which I am choosing to project. This is why we say the world you see is not the real world. It's the projection of your mind. And when you stop projecting your guilt and project instead your innocence, guess what happens? The world changes. Everything changes right before your eyes like magic. But it begins with the realization that anything I choose to see is really a reflection of me. Let that be burned into your, into your head. That which I choose to see is really a reflection of me, of what I'm choosing for myself, which I, I probably at this point, as long as I consider that there are exceptions to this, to truth, at this point, I'm going to need to be out here instead of realizing 
where it always is. Every thought, everything I perceive comes from the projector. You know, there is no coincidence that 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 word projector, like a projector onto a movie screen, is one of the best e examples of what we do and our salvation. As soon as we realize that that the, that the, the screen, what is happening on the screen is not a real thing, it's just the projection, well, then we can take off that big spool of, of film and put on the real world, begin to see the real world. So let me share a couple of, of lines from the course, and let's see where they take us. Okay, here we go. Once again, projection makes perception. This is one of the, three of the most important words you're ever going to hear. Projection makes perception. We look inside first. Decide the kind of world we want to see. And then project that world outside. Making it the truth as we see it. Sounds very simple, doesn't it? It sounds even obvious when, when you hear it. In fact, there's nothing unusual, nothing, nothing even all that mystical about this. Psychologists have been saying this for, for a very long time, ever since Jung, maybe before Jung. Okay, let me just read it again, because I want this seared into your mind. Projection makes perception. We look inside first, decide the kind of world we want to see, and then we project that world outside, making it the truth as we see it. So what do you think the first step would be to begin perceiving the real world? To look within, to find that, and then to project that. Instead of projecting a world based upon the guilt that I, the, the hidden guilt that is still hidden in my mind that I refuse to see, then projecting that out so I can blame somebody else for it. Why not take that big piece of film off school of film and and find the one that says oh the real world there's a movie called the real world let's put that one on the projector and see only that choose only that remember it all comes down to your choice what you choose to witness what you choose to see all right let me read a bit more projection will always hurt you it reinforces your belief in your own split mind and its only purpose is to keep the separation going. The only purpose of projection is to keep separation going. It is solely a device of the ego to make you feel different from your brothers and sisters and separated from them. The ego justifies this on the grounds that it makes you seem better than they are. Oh my goodness, there you go, right there. It makes you seem better than them, thus securing your equality with them still further. Okay, so the ego always wants obviously to be separate, but, but its other goal is to make you better, to make you superior, to make you, I don't know, the boss, the bomb, the whatever to make you better. So as soon as you begin to feel that brewing inside you, you're looking at, at another and you're, you're, you're judging them, you're, you're looking upon what isn't really there, just bring it back and choose to see yourself and that other, whoever that other person is, as God sees them. This is the surest way to, to jump right out of the projection game to choose to see as God sees, which is not through the, the lens of guilt, but through the lens of innocence. It's like, once again, wearing glasses. Oh, I forgot and I put my, my guilt glasses on this morning. Let me grab the, the, the innocence ones and said, and ah, the world changes before my eyes. It's like a miracle. Here's a little bit more. Projection and attack are inevitably related because projection is always the means for justifying attack. Anger without projection is impossible. Whoa. Did you hear that? Anger without projection is impossible. 
So if you want to be happy, just pull everything in and choose to see yourself as God sees you, which will then give you the lens, the glasses to see everyone else in that same way. The ego uses projection only to destroy your perception of both yourself and others. Now, what's the, the opposite of projection? Anyone know? Hmm? Extension, precisely. In fact, here's the next line. The Holy Spirit extends and the ego projects. The Holy Spirit extends what it knows itself to be whole, holy, and holy, and love itself. Okay, it, it only extends what it knows itself to be. The Holy Spirit begins by perceiving you as perfect. Knowing this perfection is shared as the Holy Spirit recognizes it in others, thus strengthening it in both. Instead of anger, this arouses love for both because it establishes inclusion. So the Holy Spirit extends. Until now, we have chosen to do the opposite. See, extension is always through grace. Projection is always guilt. So the simple answer, whenever we see anything, is to simply remember that I have a choice. I can choose to see as God sees. Now, living in community, as those of us who are here at Namaste Village, this is a very valuable lesson. Because it really is the escape hatch. Because we rub up against each other. We, 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 we trigger one another. And that is the best gift you can be given. Is to be triggered by another person. And then to take the next step, which is to see that, to realize that, and then to choose instead. In, instead of uh, projection, and choose to extend love to that person. You know, I have to say, um, someone came to me the other day and, and was talking to me about how dysfunctional this community is. Oh, this community, this and that, and had, had all of these reasons to, to try and prove to me their vision of, of why Namaste Village is going in the wrong direction. And you know what? I, I didn't say this, but what I felt, because really to say anything in that moment would not be helpful. What I could really do is just look at that myself. And the truth is I lived in, I think I counted at one point, eight different communities. I have never been in a community that, that is as functional and as mature spiritually as this community. Now, why do I see that? Because it's my choice to see it. I'm projecting, or rather I'm extending that truth, that reality, onto this community. Now, if I choose to see anything other than that, it's what I'm not seeing in myself. So once again, li living in a community like this can be very, very helpful for us to see where, hitting my table, to see what I am choosing. And it doesn't matter if you live in a place like Namaste Village or, or anywhere. Every moment we have the opportunity to choose, to see, to realize what we're seeing or what we're choosing. How we interpret everything. Exactly. So I'm kind of jumping around here, but I think I've given Vicky plenty of, of work to start here. So Vicky, take it away. Hey, Brother James. Here I am. Let me get my view up here. Good. Well, so I love where you started. Perception makes, projection makes perception. That's because it is by our nature, how we're created, that we must continue to extend and give of ourselves. What we've been giving is a reflection of the guilt we've all felt about leaving heaven. God, I can do it on my own, prodigal son completely prodigal son and there's no way around it that's why we're created as givers to keep co-creating but when we recognize that the world we see is not a reality that's the fundamental piece here but it's a screen that's reflecting 
what we're holding in our mind. And the world has been holding, the, all of us, we're all responsible for a collective experience of guilt. So the world and perception is really just a mirror. I was thinking of this the other day that what would be some of the most helpful things for um, little toys, you know, to play the game of awakening with. And one of them was the light to recognize we're all just this light. I keep it right here. And another would be a mirror. Everything is a mirror. So I don't have to go fight the image on the on a television screen or that I think I see in a perceptual world. I just have to, it's a mirror. And it must be a mirror of where I find myself guilty. And what the ego does with that is quite remarkable. It says, good, now we'll go on a search. We'll do an excavation of every place you're guilty. Let's go to this lifetime, 10 lifetimes before. Ego loves, loves a, a project, calls it spiritual. So we all feel, oh, this is good. We're doing something. But the excavation need only start and stop right now. Right now is enough to say, this is triggering. This is showing me a hidden place where I've still blamed myself and I'm doing it now. I think I'll stop it right now. I'm gonna stop it right now. That's why this is a helpful teaching of shifting our awareness right now. That's why um, the guys in um, the Emissaries of Light always said, we're ready now. We're ready now to shift into present innocence. It's been believed guilt that we've buried that's been showing up around us as a world of war. The history of time and space is the history of war in every, wherever we look, because it's been the history of our hating ourselves, fighting with ourselves, trying to eliminate God from our life and we see it projected out that we feel very guilty about this. And now we're at a place where I'm so grateful I know it's a mirror, not a fact. It's not a factual universe. It's a mirror of perception, a mirror reflecting my belief. So the only two beliefs we ever have are love or fear, fear or innocence, fear or love. So that's why it's so simple if we can let it be. And the only time there is that goes with all that is right now, only right now. I see guilt. It's not about my brother's guilt. It's not about someone else's guilt. It's always only my own. This is 100% responsibility. But that's where the excavating stops. It is mine. I own it. There's 0% blame, 0% there, a little right, there, a little wrong, 0%. Take full responsibility, 100%, and I shift my mind. That's why the, the, in the Old and New Testament, love um, God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your brother as yourself. Shift to love God with all my heart and soul and mind, just like Yogananda's prayer in the morning that we do, and love my brother as myself. Love is the, is the special agent of shifting our consciousness, or better yet, the willingness to love and see innocence, present innocence in myself and in my brother, recognizing it's a mirror. And then when we are now, it's a law that we must give of ourselves. So if we're not going to project a world based on the hidden guilt we've been holding, and we right now accept present innocence, then what has to come through us to, as, as what we've been created at as beings of being and giving and creating is the extension of love and light. And that's why it's impossible that heaven does not appear on earth as heaven starts being coming into our awareness as what we already are. Not we have to get to it or we have to find it. It's what we already are, but we have to accept it. We have to accept the mirror image that we see outside of us as the innocence of ourselves rather than any guilty party. And in that innocence, 
is that place where all that's that place of um of shifting of transformation if we just stay there without trying to cover it up the ego has many many ways to trap us into not moving through this point of right here right now from fear to love from guilt to innocence wants to distract us let's go eat something let's drink something let's go play a game let's go watch tv let's go discuss let's discuss innocence let's discuss guilt it can do that but right now is the only time and we do it right now together i can see we are right now we accept present innocence and let that be the force of heaven as our own being and allow that just to it, to flow through us like Scott's song this morning. Let it flow like a river. Let it flow from us. And it's not a terrible thing to see problems. It's a wondrous thing because now we can let go of what we've been believing in as our guilt. A present problem is an outpicturing of past belief in guilt. Let it be present responsibility that frees us from past belief in guilt. So it becomes present responsibility and choice. I'm going to choose again. I'm not guilty. I did not leave home. Thank God it was an impossibility. I am one with my father, one with God, one with everything. That's my reality. And I'm going to hold to it. That's that voice of truth that we already are rising up in us and we recognize it everywhere we recognize that that's why we're here we recognize it in each other's faces we recognize it in each other's voices we feel it because it is a reality extension is a reflection of our true reality as the light that we've been created as so the world we see is not reality, but it is helpful for us to find our reality if we let it be the mirror of helpfulness. When we see a problem, we take responsibility and allow it to transform us, release that misbelief, return us to present innocence and present love. That's where we are. That's who we, who we are given to be as we love ourselves and love each other this world around us is changing from fear to love on earth as it is in heaven, right here, right now, today. Thank you, Brother Amen. James. That's all I can say to that. Amen. Thank you, Vicki. And I was realizing as you were speaking that there is one sure and very quick way for us to get to that place, for us to realize uh, how we project and then choose to extend only love instead. And that is to realize that the only one who needs to get this is me. We've said this before, but really take that in. I'm the only one that needs to get this. Because as soon as I say, Ravi, you need to learn this lesson, or whoever it may be, guess what? I've lost the lesson. I've given you the lesson now. Rather than realizing the only one who needs to get this is me. And then I realize that you never lost it. It has always been right there for you. So let's just keep that responsibility today. Realize that every moment I have a choice between guilt and innocence. Choose to see only love. Choose to see only innocence in your brothers and sisters. And then you'll know it in yourself. It really is that simple. And so we say together, amen, 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 e punto. And by the way, one, one real quick thing I'll say without giving too much detail, um, and Vicky doesn't even know I'm going to say this, but next year at some point, toward, you know, beginning to the middle of the year, um, Vicky is going to come out here and, and we are going to do a, a week-long uh, live-in retreat where we're going to be inviting all of you guys to come here to Ahihik and to join us. So get ready for more information on that. Vicki, is that okay? <laughs> She's waving her hands. So um, like I said, the only thing Vicki and I have talked about is that we're gonna do this. We, we haven't had any discussion about it. My thought is to, to, to do a retreat where we plan nothing. 
we just come together and and explode in grace explode together in the experience of love so have a beautiful day we love you all we'll see you tomorrow namaste Happy Monday. love you all